Hello and welcome to this video, which is going to be about Persian Kulon Glyphs. Why do we use this? Well, on the Nightblade, we have a passive called Catalyst. After drinking a potion, you gain 20 ultimate. The idea here is that we want as much ultimate region as possible, so not only do we run pearls, we also run three infused pearls and Kulon Glyphs to get as much as possible. This also makes a lot of sense since we're trying to reduce our magic region to not over sustain on pearls, so why not hit two birds with one stone and also get some extra uh, ultimate region on top of reducing our magical region. Persian cooldown glyphs each give us five seconds reduction. With enthused traits, that's five seconds times four point eight, which equals twenty-four seconds cooldown reduction. The base cooldown of a potion is forty-five seconds, so that means our new cooldown is now twenty-one seconds between every potion. We get 20 ult per cast, so that will be 0 0.95 ult per second, or about 57 ult per minute. A few years ago, most support players would laugh at you if you suggested running something like Potion Cooldown Glyphs. The idea here is that support players tend to hold on to ultimates a little bit to cast them at the right time. Sos noticed this, that we didn't really uh, build into ultimate and gave some utility beyond the 250 cost of Warhorn, so that even if we are holding our ultimate, we can get something for the ultimate that goes past 250. This comes in the f this comes in the form of sets such as Nazroy and Pillagers, Saxiel Chairman, as well as the remade version of Master Architect. So there's a few sets out there that can use ultimate beyond the um, cap of just casting, and probably some other set that I missed. The idea here is that the extra alt we get above 250 actually gives our group something beyond being useless. This means that stacking even small amounts of ultra region actually makes sense. So if you don't have enough ultimate to be able to cast, you know, twice as many, but you just have enough to cast, you know, 10% more, well, usually that just meant that that 10% went to waste. No, it does not. So what's not to like about it? Well, it just comes down to the actual, actual value of what you're getting. So let's compare two builds. Uh, we have a build using three infused magical reading glyphs, and um, we have a build using three infused uh, uh, potion cooldown glyphs. First off, we're getting 0 0.95 volt per second, as explained before. We're also getting some magicka from these extra potions. The base um, amount of magicka is 7582. We have, we cast 60 divided by 21 of these potions each minute. And then we divide that by 60 and we end up getting 361 magic per second. In our comparison, we're getting roughly 1460 magic region from our three infused magic region glyphs. Go watch the re recovery versus reduced cost video if you want to see where this number came from. We're still getting some magic from our potions when we're not, when we don't have potion cooldown glyphs. That's the 7582 times 60 divided by 45 instead, and then divide, divided by 60 again. And that turns out we're getting 168 magicka per second. We're also getting some ultimate as well, even though we don't have potion cooldown glyphs. We're getting 20 every 45 seconds, so that would be 0 0.44 ultimate per second. Now we want to subtract from each side, so we see what the actual difference is. So we take 0, 0 0.95 minute minus 0 0.44, that's 0 0.51 ultimate per second. We take the 361 minus the 168, that's 192, and the 1460 just stays for now. We can now convert 192 magicka per second into magicka region. We do this by just doubling it, because magicka region is magicka every two seconds. We then subtract from the 1460, the 192, and we get 1075 magicka region on one side versus 0 0.51 ult per second on the other side. And we can now convert this magic region back into magic per second, and we see that we get 537 magic per second versus 0 0.51 ult per second. So this is the gain from having three magic region glyphs versus having three potion cooldown glyphs. As you can see, we lose quite a loss of sustain for a very little amount of ultimate region, especially because there's one alternative. The not passive is about 0.5 ultimate per se second, which is the same as we get from these potion cooldown glyphs. But the loss of sustain from having lost your breath and passives is not as much as you lose by investing into potion cooldown glyphs. Your RBS skill cast would have to be 6750 magic for the breath and passives to lose as much as you lose in sustain here. And you can see the equation here. We take the skill cost you would need times 0 0.07, that's the breath and passive, has to be equal 
to 537 minus 65 because we also get 130 magical region for being a pattern and that means the skill cost would have to be 6754 to be equal enough about that what i think is more important to think about here is that your potion buffs are 100 percent with or without potion cooling glyphs and that's the main sort of focus of having potions the buffs are what makes them powerful you do get the option of having two different potion um, set set of potion passives up 100% of the time if you're swapping between them every time but I don't ever see people doing this using this build the other problem is the potion burn rate potions are already expensive to run in the first place so this just makes it even more expensive to rate so you don't get more potion passives and you also burn a lot more uh, gold per minute especially if you're using minor heroism passive my last point is how little ultimate gain it is in the big picture you know the not passive is not that great there's a good reason that healers aren't you know rushing to swap their uh, uh, characters into noughts 0 0.51 all per second that's roughly 10 percent of pearls if you lost just 10 percentage points of uptime or six casts per minute from running this build that's the same ultimate loss as you gain from these glyphs. It's not entirely unrealistic with almost three potion casts per minute that you would lose six casts. As you have to cast these potions on cooldown, and that's the most common source I see from logs of people going above the 30% threshold. So you imagine every time you cast a potion, you go above 30%, you lose a cast of pearls. That's also why I don't think this strategy is worth it. You're likely to lose some of your pearl subtime will which will eventually eat into your effective ultimate region from these glyphs which ultimately makes the glyph worthless if you lose small six or more cast then in some cases it's even worse than worthless you're actually losing ultimate by wearing these glyphs but let's move on and actually imagine the perfect scenario so you don't lose any pearl subtime and the region loss does not matter so you imagine you're actually gaining ultimate you still have to use your ultimate before they found it very short for pillager and that's what i see from locks is that often even not wearing po potion cool gland lifts people don't get the full utility from pearls it's because they go above the 400 threshold for pillager and then they lose the ultimate that us above that so anything you put on top of pearls is just going to be a hundred percent waste now you can pair pillager with master architect which i often see people do especially when using this build because master architect has a 500 threshold but still if you're not taking full advantage of pearls any ultimate you're building on top of it is wasted and this is the reason you don't see support players rushing to create not characters because ultimately most region on top of pearls does not matter in most cases. So what is a good place to use these glyphs? The answer to this question is Arcasis. Arcasis is a good trash setup for getting alt ready for fights later on or another like in a tr uh, or another trash pack. So it can either be a boss or a trash pack you're saving alt for, but it's also decent to run in dungeons. Though in dungeon, it's dungeons, it's usually outshined by Drake's Rush. But sometimes, someone else is running Drake's Rush, and then Arcasis is also good. And for Arcasis, you will need two infused potion cooldown glyphs to use. But that's pretty much the only case I can come up with where these glyphs make a sense in a broad sense. So, you might see some extremely short fight in a hyper hyper optimized group where players use these glyphs to have a nightblade support get ultimate twice where they otherwise wouldn't but that's outside the scope of 99 percent of players and that's pretty much my conclusion if you're running our cases these glyphs make sense if you're doing anything else just wear your usual setup of infused magical region or whatever you like to wear anyways thanks for watching and i'll see you next time